everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this last minute holiday cowl. This is a super fast project. We're using some super bulky yarn, some really pretty kind of seasonal looking yarn and a large end hook. We're going to talk about the supplies in detail in just a minute. But I made this up in about an hour. It's so fast and easy. It makes a wonderful gift if you need to kind of knock off some gifts on your to-do list. Or if you just want to make a beautiful cow for yourself uh, to wear uh, during the holiday season. So the height of this cow is about nine inches tall. This is done in just nine rounds. So this is nine inches tall and has a 30 inch circumference. So it's slouchy and comfortable and just has a nice fit and feel to it. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a nine millimeter N crochet hook. This is my furl streamline. I'll put the link down below in a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself as well as a discount on that. And the yarn that we'll be using is this beautiful festive yarn that um, was in the Knit Crate this month. This is um, Uru Yarn Cozy from Knit Crate. This is the Bubble Tea Colorway, and I have two skeins of this. Each one is 55 yards. So you'll need for this project a total of 110 yards of super bulky weight yarn. You can see it's nice and thick and cozy and super soft. This is sort of like, I would call this like a muted wasabi color, and it has like some red flecks and some darker green flecks. So it's just really um, seasonal looking to me. And um, again, 110 yards of super bulky weight yarn. The um, I have a coupon code for this and I'll put the link down below if you'd like to see the yarn that they have. Again, this was in their crate this month, uh, but I'll put the link down below and a coupon code for this as well. So check out the coupon codes for the hook and the yarn if you want a discount on those. So nine millimeter end crochet hook, 110 yards of super bulky weight yarn for that. Okay, so I have my hook and yarn and we're ready to go. Now I wanted to mention as a side note, um, just a little while ago when I talked about the yarn, it was in skeins. I've wound mine into a cake. You can wind yours into a ball, but um, if you try to work with the skeins, there'll be a big tangly mess. So you do have to wind the yarn when it comes in skeins like that. So what we're gonna do is our starting chain first. So we're gonna do a starting chain of 60. That will give us a little bit of snugness, but some nice drape, and it'll be comfortable enough to slip over the head. So to begin, we're gonna take our yarn, wrap it around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up that loop and tighten. Then, like I mentioned, we're gonna do 60 chains to begin. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60. So here's our starting chain. Now I do get the question a lot that your starting chain is snug or too tight. If it's too tight, just go up a hook size for your starting chain only, and then you can come back to the end hook for the rest of your piece. So now we're going to join to uh, make a circle so that we can start to work upward on our cowl. So what you wanna do is go to that first chain you made all the way down at the end here. But what I like to do, you gotta be careful not to twist your chain, otherwise you'll have like a Mobius, uh, like a figure eight shape. So I like to just kind of run my thumb down the whole chain, unturning and twisting as necessary. See how it turned a little bit? I'm gonna just make sure that we run our thumb all the way down our chain. And this takes an extra minute, but it's totally worth it. So you don't have to worry about any twisting. We're gonna go all the way to the end and there's the first chain we made. So with your loop up here still on your hook, insert your hook at that last chain, grab your yarn, wrap your yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook, okay? We're not gonna worry about this tail right now. And we're gonna begin round one. So what we wanna do for round one is to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And that counts as a double crochet chain one. So the first three chains are our double crochet and then a chain one. Now in that first chain, you can see it's kind of a little bigger than the other chains. See how it looks a little bit more open here? 
than the other ones, and it's sort of attached to the, the knot here where we began, we're gonna work a double crochet right into that first chain. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that first chain and bring up a loop, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. And this is technically our first V. It doesn't look like much now, but it will make more sense later. Okay, next, we'll just kind of get this tail out of the way, not worry about it. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, we're gonna work another V. So to make a V, work a double crochet, then a chain one, and then a double crochet, all in that same chain. So that is our next V of the round, okay? We're gonna do the same thing all the way around. Skip two chains, in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains in the chain after that. Work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains in the chain after that. Work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains in the chain after that. Work your next V. Again, we're just doing this all the way around. Skip two chains in the chain after that. Work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I just wanted to pause for a minute and show you we, we're getting a nice little row of the stitches. Super duper easy, okay? This is a very quick project, so we're gonna whiz through this pretty fast, okay? Skip the next two chains in the chain after that, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Whoops. Skip the next two chains in the chain after that, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains in the chain after that, Work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains in the chain after that. Work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains in the chain after that. Work your next V double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains in the chain after that. Work the next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains in the chain after that. Work the next V, double crochet, chain one, whoops, and a double crochet. Sometimes if you find your chains getting a little distorted, you just sort of give a little tug as you go, okay? Sometimes that does that when you're working into those chains. Skip the next two chains and the chain after that, work a V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains and the chain after that, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, skip two chains in the chain after that, same thing, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, we're coming around, skip the next two chains in the chain after that, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, skip the next two chains in the chain after that, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Skip two chains in the next chain, same thing, 
double crochet, chain one, double crochet. All right, we're getting towards the end. Skip two chains, and the chain after that, work a V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now you'll have just one little chain here, and then we're back where we started. So remember that chain four we did, and I said it counted as a double crochet chain one? What you're gonna do is count one, two, three chains up, and we're gonna join with a slip stitch to close. So in her, insert the hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And round one is complete. So you can see we have some lovely V stitches. Okay, so for round two, round two is even easier because we don't have to skip anything or count any chains. We're just working into the center of each V all the way around. We're gonna begin the round together and then work on it, the rest of it on our own. So what we're gonna do for round two, and this is the round you'll do for the entire rest of the count. So for round two, what you're gonna do is chain four once again, one, two, three, and four, and then that first V that you come to right here, we're gonna work a double crochet right into that first V. Now remember we did a double crochet, chain one, double crochet all the way around. That is called the chain one space. It's the space that was created by making a chain one. Um, that's how it is in the written pattern on the blog as well. So right in that chain one space in each V all the way around, we'll work a double crochet to finish our V. Okay, hop over to the next V and we're gonna work a V into that V. So work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. See how the V's are starting to stack on one another. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, same thing, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So we're gonna do this all the way around. Let's do a few more together. Go into that next V in that chain one space member. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I'm just gonna do this all the way around in each V, okay? And you can see how quickly we're moving through round two. Not having to count anything, just, just had to do that for round one, just to set up our, our stitches, if you will. So we're just working a V into every V, basically, okay? Now, we're gonna keep going around. I, I did about halfway through that quickly. So we're gonna keep going, um, and we get to the end of round two, I'll show you how to complete the round. Okay, we're just coming up to the end of the round, working that last V. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Same thing we've been doing all the way around. And then what we're gonna do is where we began, remember that chain four once again? We're gonna count one, two, three chains up and join with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay, so round two is complete. And it's starting to look really pretty and it's growing very quickly. This is a perfect project for this time of year, cozy and fast. So what we're gonna do for the rest of our piece, and let me just zoom out so you can see it better. What we're gonna do for the rest of this project is to repeat round two over and over and over until it's as tall as you would like it to be or until you run out of yarn, whatever comes first. Um, as you can see, I've put quite a dent in this first cake with just two rounds. It's a really chunky yarn, fast project. So keep repeating round two over and over and over and we'll rejoin in just a minute and finish up our cowl. All right, just working that very last V of the round. And then we're going to close the round in that third chain up with a slip stitch like we've done for all the other rounds. And our cowl is complete. I have just a little bit of yarn here, not enough to make another round. So with my super bulky yarn and my end hook, 
let's count. We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounds total. And we have a lovely size and our height that we achieved is nine inches tall. So nine rounds, nine inches, that's nice and uh, easy. So the last thing we need to do is just finish it right up. So grab your scissors, and cut the yarn, and I wanted to say as a side note, I may have mentioned this earlier in the video. Um, well, hang on, we're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook to finish off, bring it through the loop and tighten. Um, what I wanted to mention earlier, I, I may have mentioned this before, but um, this took me like an hour to make, which is so satisfying, especially if you have some gifts to kind of knock off your list. It's, it's really helpful to have some projects like this on hand, um, some patterns, and uh, that super bulky yarn certainly helps. Okay, so I threaded my tapestry needle. I have a couple of ends here, and I'm just going to carefully weave this into the back loops. I See how I opened this up? And we're just going to go in those back loops here and weave that end and I'm going to come back in the other direction just to make sure everything stays put and I use two skeins of the yarn like we talked about earlier so I do have a tail um, on the inside of my cow I need to take care of and then this is the tail where we began so let's spin that around and fold it down again I have this tail but I um was really pleased at how quickly this went and it looks super festive so I'm just loving it. So you could wear this to uh, around while you're maybe doing some shopping or going to gatherings or you could give this as a really nice gift as well. Very very fast project. Okay so we also I need to turn this inside out for just a sec because this is where I joined my yarn. I just kind of tied it on, tied the new yarn on, and just kept on crocheting. And then that's our last tail. But if you're using more, if you had more yarn on your ball, for example, you wouldn't have this. Okay, have that one tucked in, and then the last one tucked in. We're just gonna go right in those back loops here. Okay, and then I wove them both in, so I'm just going to give them both a quick snip. All right, now let's look at our beautiful cow. We can kind of straighten up the stitches a little bit. And our cow is complete, and it looks great. I love it. I love this subtle green. It's not so bright and like that bright, bright, bright green you see sometimes at the holidays. It's just a really nice kind of wasabi or sage green and these little subtle flecks. So it's just a really wearable, super fast piece. So I hope you enjoyed this project and that is how you crochet the last minute holiday cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.